I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over a thousand posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, a nurse practitioner, we are the New York Times and Amazon best-selling authors of the Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its award-winning third edition, plus other books, as well as designers of medical kits meant for when help is not on the way at store.doomandbloom.net. We're heading back to the mountains in East Tennessee and the place we're at, well, let's just say it's a long way down if you fall off the deck. In spring or other rainy seasons, snow melt and heavy rainfall can saturate the ground and cause instability in sloping areas. You'll find evidence of previous mudslides all over our neck of the woods, that's for sure. But what makes a mudslide and can you prepare for it? A mudslide, sometimes called a debris flow, is a landslide with a high water content. Mudslides act like a river that, if the mud is thick, has a consistency of wet concrete. Rocks, trees, other large objects, they're carried along and can cause homes to collapse and traumatic injury to residents. In the U.S., about 25 to 50 deaths occur annually as a result of landslides and mudslides, more in less developed countries. Areas prone to earthquakes, hurricanes, wildfires, and other natural disasters are especially susceptible. Humans contribute to this susceptibility with poor planning. This is a big problem. Roads that are cut into hills, mountains, these make mudslides more likely. And those pretty riverside retreats at the base of a mountain, well, they're also at risk. Before building that dream home on the mountain, there are a few things that you should consider. Beware of steep slopes, natural or man-made runoff conduits, or eroded areas. If possible, avoid areas that have experienced mudslides in the past. It would be wise, very wise as a matter of fact, to have the county geologic survey specialist check out your property for mudslide risk. You might consider installing flexible pipe fittings that are less prone to gas or water leaks. You should consider building a retaining wall, perhaps, to shore up weak spots and any likely mudslide channels. And, as of course, as all preparedness folk know, it's important to have a plan, right? Right. Plot out at least two evacuation routes, have a battery-powered NOAA weather radio, and have a medical kit with items to deal with both traumatic injury and water sterilization might be bad in these circumstances. Of course, at first glance, your place might look safe, but there are visible warning signs that trouble might just be on the way. Cracks developing in walls, flooring, paving, driveways, foundations. Outside structures, for example, begin to separate from buildings, things like stairs. Doors and windows start becoming jammed. Fences, trees, and utility poles might start tilting or could even fall. Water starts accumulating in strange places such as where the runoff drainage converges. You need to know where that is. Roads and embankments along slopes start breaking off at the edges. You see that a lot in our area. And water bodies that are usually clear suddenly become muddy. That suggests there's debris flow activity upstream. And the terrain starts to bulge or starts slanting at the base of the slope. Now, during the event, it's very important to turn on your NOAA weather radio and listen to warnings as they are reported. Warn your neighbors, make sure they know that there's a risk. And if a mudslide is imminent, leave the area if at all possible with the understanding that roads indeed may be washed out. If you stay home, get to the second story if you have one and watch for and avoid any downed power lines. As the slide passes through, get under a table, curl into a ball, protect your head like you would in an earthquake. And if you're trapped in the mud, you have to remember the survival rates go up if you can form an air pocket around you, perhaps by holding your hands in front of your face as the mud envelops you. If you have air, you can survive for a period of time. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you need a solid medical kit for that wilderness hike, hunting trip, or even long-term survival, check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.